So how does sleep impact your relationships and your um, physical relationships in particular? Firstly, what we know is that a man that is sleeping just five to six hours a night will have a level of testosterone, which is that of someone 10 years their senior. So a lack of sleep will actually age a man by almost a decade in terms of that critical aspect of wellness and virility. Um, and I should note that we see equivalent impairments in female reproductive health caused by a lack of sleep. In addition, what we also know is that for every one hour of sleep, an extra sleep that a woman gets, she will have an increase of somewhere between 13 to 15 percent in terms of being physically intimate with her partner. So sleep actually promotes that type of closeness and physical bond between partners. We also know that sleep disorders are a problem in a couple. Firstly, we know that men are far more likely to be snorers and they will disrupt their partner's sleep by way of that severe snoring. We also know that women are twice as likely to suffer from the clinical disorder insomnia than men are. And so when you add these things up, you can see why sometimes it can be very difficult for a couple to find the sleep that they necessarily need. And it's the reason that there is a growing movement towards what we call a sleep divorce, which may help you actually prevent a real divorce. And what I mean by that is, people will actually sleep in separate locations or in separate bedrooms. What we know is that already about 40% of people surveyed anonymously will say that they sleep in separate beds. Um, of the remaining 60%, um, about two thirds of them will go to bed together but will wake up in separate rooms the next morning. So it seems to be a real problem and there's a stigma. Now this isn't a one size fits all. Um, for some people, sleeping together um, physically is actually a critical part of that intimacy and safety too. But if you do choose to have a sleep divorce, you can actually try to bookend it to make it feel less of a separation. What I mean is that you can have a bit of a cuddle and uh, a kiss before bed, um, and then in the morning, whoever wakes up first can go back into the bedroom and greet the person in the morning because it's those bookends of the night of sleep that people actually want out of co-sleeping. The rest of the time, both partners are largely non-conscious, so you don't really lose out very much by sleeping in separate rooms in that regard too. So not a one size fits all, but certainly the sleep divorce is a growing phenomena that most people, um, if they are having sleep difficulties, find hugely important. So I think the last thing I would note about a sleep divorce is that there is of course some degree of stigma that goes along with it. If you say that you're you know, not physically sleeping together, then are you not actually sleeping together? And if you look at the evidence, it's quite the opposite, that when people start to gain sufficient sleep and start getting good sleep, they feel more vital, more full of energy, feel like they want to be more intimate, their mood is typically better, so the relationship is working better, all of which means to say that people's physical relationship in terms of sex life is typically improved by good sleep rather than actually the opposite way around.